Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Magical Mischief Tour. Today we're going to be exploring, as usual, with more magical goodness. And as you can see, uh, Circe has visited me somewhere on the outskirts of my uh, vision, which I still can't find her on my mini-map somewhere, but she's out there somewhere. Um, I I've, I've completed the Golem Factory. It's, it's nothing really too fancy. Let me see if I can get some height here. It's just like this little, uh, like, spot up here for the campfire that I, I kind of liked having it there. Had a little chimney for it to go through so you kind of have that but adding the gears on the outside or the cogs uh, kind of made it look a little bit more I don't know golem factory-esque but yet also somewhat magical with the interior. Uh, at least that's the plan. Now, of course I have my uh, projectile fart spell stored up here should I need it which I will do today because um, I I've had a few interlopers come into the area over there since I installed uh, my new villager underground. <laughs> so I figured it'd be good to have just somebody nearby that can help defend the area. Um, I might also attach him to a lodestone, but uh, we'll, we'll animate him shortly. For the moment though, I would like to experiment with something that I've been overlooking for some time, and I should have... there's a lot of things that you can overlook when there's a, a big magic mod pack like this. But um, something that I've been wanting to do is make a book of rote. And if you're not familiar with what this is, it's more or less the essence of what mana and artifice is all about. And something that I should have started a long time ago. Uh, as you cast spells, like I've got my grimoire here, whether it be my grimoire or my, my other uh, magic book uh, with spells in it, or just the spell itself, you know, without any books or anything, um, then you gain like knowledge and stuff as you, as you know in here your abilities to to use it and you've got these little bars on here and as you use them more and more frequently uh, they will become rote now this is the default setting there's another one where you just need to use it once and it'll automatically click into it and you you've got it you you now will learn things for rote and what that means well first let me make this book and I can better explain there we go, I now have my Book of Rote, which you, you can try casting from it, nothing happens, as usually you need to hit control and open it, and you can design your own spells from those that you've already learned and experienced. So in this case, like, uh, I've, oops, I, I apparently just hit smite, but I could do, uh, oh boy, all sorts of stuff in here, but let, let's start with projectile. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's 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 go with smite. We had that. Let's do smite and frost damage, and we can increase its damage uh, as much as we want according to you know the complexity that we have available to us. As I have not leveled myself up yet, it's still going to be limited. Uh, plus, I'm only level like 49 or 50 or somewhere around there. And of course, I can increase the radius as well, you know, and so on. I'll even increase the height by a couple, and the range, I'm, I'm not too bothered with. There we go, and then we, we've we created a spell. We're going to call this one Comet Smite, all right? And then uh, we'll just pick something here. That looks sort of like a, a frosty comet to me. And then you can see here we've got different tabs. It's just like the Grimoire, where you can actually create multiples of it. And in this case, this is actually a little bit too complex. There we go, just bringing it down one. And now when I cast this, it, it does this big comet effect and that that's pretty much it so you can customize a bunch of your spells this way but if you notice there's more to it than what we had before obviously you can increase the damage and all this other stuff but you can add in more spells so it's not it doesn't just have to be frost you notice here I don't have flame I really haven't been using any fire spells so I don't have that option but if I add fling then it well makes it more complex for one thing there we go, but now it also has this knockback effect of fling added into that. So now when I use this and I cast it and it hits a bunch of enemies in an area, it'll also fling them back from the impact site. So you, you can actually stack damage types, you can stack different spells, and they they take effect in order. So it'll first cast this uh, combo here, and then it'll go to the next one, and next one, and next one, and next one. So you can actually have like delays or things that happen in that nature. As I've mostly been using utility spells, they don't have much for damage. But you can add in all sorts of stuff, customizing and making all sorts of interesting combos with the, with your spells. So this is a really cool combination for just making something and customizing it on the go real quick and easy. 
And if you remember, I said I didn't actually have uh, any fire spells. It's not entirely true. I've got a cantrip that I know, and that's ignite, and that's what slash and triangle. So let's do slash and then triangle, and then I'll aim at this. There we go, fire. Next, I'm going to choose break, and that should add in a little bit of extra earth. So we've got fire, earth. I'm going to add in some air just so that we've got something. Well, fart, of course, so that we've got some speed in here. And I think what I'm going to do is kind of split a bunch of the air and the earth because air increases the speed. Actually, I might do more earth, but it gives a 5% physical damage resistance. Fire gives the uh, the golem a little bit of fire damage, and I just want the one second. I think that's all it really needs. And of course, there's arcane, uh, which could be cool, but I'm not too bothered with that. So let's add in one more air, and then we're going to go with more break spell break spell break spell so we've got four earth three air and a fire so it's uh, going to be 20 percent more durable against physical attacks uh three air gives it a little bit of a speed increase uh fire will give it a little bit of fire on its uh fire attacks and now all i need to do is wake it and you can see with the different elements we've got all sorts of different effects going on it's really cool and <laughs> i just love doing this part of it there we go, we now have a new little warrior guy. And th this is a brand new one. He's got similar stuff to what the other one had, except the arms are different. Uh, so I, I can actually walk him out if I so desired, but I don't think that I, I, I have the rod with me right now, so it's not gonna work. But he's got a shield, so that's gonna increase his defense, which if you notice here gives eight armor and three toughness, so that's definitely going to be uh, helpful in keeping it itself alive. And it has uh, an arm that I might switch out. Um, actually, I was thinking, maybe I should have done a gold arm. I didn't think about that. That's a lot more damage. But I made an obsidian arm. It, it matches for now. And it has a cannon arm. So it should shoot nearby enemies with this kind of like magical laser cannon that it's got on the side. So if I shift click on there and click anywhere else, he should follow me around. But you'll notice he's still really slow. Same thing with uh, Helve that we had over there. There was a little problem with them being slow, and I found out how to update them. Uh, let me open up my backpack here, take out my soul gem, and use it on him. Then I'm going to place him down again. And he should start getting a little bit more of a speed bump. Yeah, he's a little bit faster. In fact, he's also getting like little zaps from this thing. I wonder if it's like increasing his health or something. Either way, I'm a fan of it. it these two uh, helping each other. So I'm thinking of just having him patrol around this area and, uh, in, in effect, giving a little bit of protection for this villager. In fact, we've got a willing participant right here. Look at it. Oh, you are so good. All right, you just shot that zombie on sight. There was no, no hesitation or anything. Do you have something on your back? Oh, you've got a little energy meter. That's cool. I didn't realize that. Is that how we tell how damaged you are or something? Nice. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a fan of this. Health doesn't have that. Oh, is this your, your zappy, your, your cannon? Okay, that must be your cannon recharge, and that must be... This thing is needed, so I should probably keep you close to that as it is. That's not a problem. I'll put a lever here for now, excuse me, and we'll turn that off. And we're going to give you a patrol area. We're going to say from here to here. That seems pretty good to me. I mean, I could probably make it a little bit more like rectangular or something, but we'll just go with this for now because, if anything, I only have two runes of marking left right now. And we're going to choose patrol, patrol. And that should pretty much just... Oh, actually, I don't even need to do patrol, patrol. So let's just do the one. We'll say from here to there. And then I can just turn it on, and uh, nothing will happen because I did not actually set you to follow the directions of this load. So, so sneak click and click. There we go. And he's off to do his patrol route. Now, he should just walk back and forth looking for mobs to attack. And that's pretty much it. There's, there's not much else to it. We've just got our little guard now, and he, he'll only get up to the edge of it. He's not like going to walk to the middle of the block or anything. So he just needs to touch it. And that's it. We now have a little guardian going on with his shield and laser cannon. Uh, magic laser cannon, mind you. 
And then we've got Helv over here, which is our, our multi-purpose golem for, for just making some different things on here. Uh, I did fix the uh, the stuff where there was a duplication on that. Uh, yes, I realize I could have just removed these or set up another one of these things, but uh, I, I, I'm not too bothered with it. I, I like having the extra um, superheated Vintium ingots. I've been using them for other things. In fact, I probably need them for more of those runes that I just used. <laughs> but let's get on with the, the wizard ceremony. And we can actually, let me grab, there we go, a bunch of these and start leveling up. Because if you remember, we completed everything last time. We need to complete the following ritual of the Wizard's Council to get to Tier 5. You know what? Because I can't be bothered with other enemies that might come by right now, um, I'm going to have you follow me right now. So you can keep me protected while I'm setting up this ritual with these new uh, metal runes instead of using the previous uh, ones that were just a bunch of chalk. There we go, plenty left. I probably should have used like a little pouch to just, you know, re be recasting this, but it was something that I didn't think that I would need to recast multiple times before. Uh, but if anything, I'm not spending any of my chalk durability anymore and I don't need to use that. I can still just pick these up easily. All right, and with this, that should be enough. I had to actually make some more stuff, so I kind of worked through the night a little bit. But there we go, that looks correct. I've got everything here. Then we just uh, commit to the ceremony at this point. I need you to stay here, uh, or else the wizards might not be uh, happy with you. I still like the ceremony, it's really good. And I can't say I blame uh, <laughs> uh, Mythian there for uh, reusing it for each level up on this case, especially if I'm like part of the wizard council. It looks like I'm lining up in the middle this time instead of like a little bit off to the edge. Nice. And there we go. I should be level five now. Yep, or tier five that is. You need to come with me and I'm gonna leave those runes there for the moment. We're going to have a look and see what else there is to do. You are not currently commanding a construct. Oh, whoops. Let's open this up. You are at the maximum tier. Nice. Oh, and now there's chain effects in here. Living bomb. Mana transfer. Mana shield. Arcane damage. Oh, man, there's just all this good stuff in here that... Heck, I might have even missed some of this on previous levels. I can't remember. All right, so I am curious. I know you've got a pretty decent amount of health. This shouldn't kill you or anything. It pushed you a tiny bit, but you did not get hit by it. This is good to see. Okay, I, I did want to make sure that I wasn't killing you. And thankfully, the uh, <laughs> I just realized the villager is down there. I should be careful with this sky comet so it's not too close over there. <laughs> All right, so... I got myself a few more spells so that I could uh, rote a few more damage types and stuff. And these zombies just came out of nowhere as I was testing them. And funny enough, I think I actually have a pretty decent set at this point. I mean, I've got this beam fire spell, which is really effective in itself. I've got uh, some electricity lightning storm effect. Uh, I also have arcane damage traps, but I... I need a little bit more mana for that. Uh, yeah, mana regen is going to be a thing <laughs> while well, I've got these going. Oh no! No, I don't want to open up. Run! Because if one of them... Yeah, one of them hits that trap, they all die. Uh, and... Funny thing, I wasn't recording during that time. Excuse me. Go away. Uh, but... Um, yeah, the, the traps are actually really, really dangerous because they also do damage to me. Um, yeah, that's definitely a thing to worry about. Oh, I've got a new, a new ring. Is it any good? Uh, health regen. Eh, it's not that good. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, these new spells, they're pretty good. And I think I might mess around with them a little bit because I've got a few more things in mind. And that involves ore processing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why did I make damage spells for ore processing? Well, I mean, there, there's many reasons one could go with that. Are you okay? Are you not doing the thing anymore? Did did the lever get turned off? You don't seem to be... Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I guess he just needed to be reset. Uh, he's been actually been doing a pretty good job. I kept on getting these little uh, like zappy fey things coming in and he was just taking a knee and then just 
laser cannoning them to death. It was really nice. Then I didn't have to like stop what I was doing and take care of them anymore. <laughs> but I think that the uh, that villager triggered the, uh, the zombie spawn event. Funny thing. Um, yeah, I think it represents that he's in a village now. So this entire village area is kind of dangerous, especially if I get like a, an illager in infestation. But yeah, back to uh, ore processing. I'm sure some of you remember that I've got this here, this giant stack of all these ores and everything. Useful things that I've been so far running over here and processing individually. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm, I'm going to want to process these properly. And I figured, you know, even if I didn't have this mass amount of stuff, I would I would likely want to be efficient about it. And I think what I'm going to need for that is going to be some new rituals. Um, also, I may have made one of these arcane sentries, which is kind of cool. It's not nearly as effective as a golem. It's a lot cheaper as well. It requires a spell book, Vintium Dust, some wizard chalk, and a rune of defense. Uh, and then you can, uh, like, charge it or something like that and place it down. Um, and then you can... You know, you fuel it with Vintium stuff, uh, Vintium dust. That's actually what it was. I, I forgot. And you can tell it what to attack and stuff. It, it does its job. It's just not nearly as good as my new laser cannon golem. And in order to be efficient with uh, processing those ores, I'm going to make a Merid Crusher. This is going to be something a little bit more advanced. Okay, it's the most advanced demon that there is. Uh, it's more, both more resistant to essence decay and faster than the Afrit Crusher, which is great. Um... But if you look, it requires Fatma's incentivized attraction. And I don't have this in the tower. And there's a good reason for that. It's really big. If I if I click visualize, I think, yeah, it's, it's actually like in some of the walls in this case when I'm looking around here. So I think we're going to have to kind of go down a level. Yeah, definitely look at that. It, it's kind of like in, in the walls. That's not going to work. So we're going to have to uh, go down a level and make a basement uh, down underneath. And a Merid Crusher is just like the little foliate demons that we've had before, but they're just more efficient and effective at doing so. They, they make more ores, they crush faster, and they, uh, they might not even have any essence decay. So the first thing, of course, is going to be removing these lovely spectral generator wait, wait slipstream generators that's it and going down a few levels uh let's see how many levels do i need to go down all right five levels down and i think if i hit break area oh that took out a little too much i guess i need to go down one more level yeah that's going to be a bit of a mess that i'm going to need to clean up up there um yeah mistakes were made uh so don't do what i did <laughs> All right, so it looks like I've got all the ingredients here except for one thing, red chalk. I am going to need to actually make some, and that is part of the process that I'm talking about. Impure red chalk requires a freet essence, and this will summon in an afrit, which you will then have to fight in order to get this essence. So first, let me make some of this stuff. I'm also going to need Opera's Open Conjure, which I haven't made this one yet either. As this is only used for one thing, and that is a freet essence, Actually, I'm going to need a block there. Uh, I am not going to actually have it in the tower because I don't need it for anything else. And I really only need to use this once. So I think I'm just going to use, do it out here for a one-time temporary use. There we go. That's better. And now we've started summoning an unbound Ifrit. Now, hopefully, it's not going to be too bad of a battle. Um, I am going to put down a trap over here. And we'll see how it goes. I might just end up using electricity since it's an Afrit. It, I don't know. It might be immune to fire damage. I don't know. Um, but I can't get too close to that. I think it does like an area of a three or five block radius or diameter. I, I can't remember, but I can't be too close to it if I do get the thing going here. Oh, and I just realized that... Um, let's make a little bit of an area. This isn't working because it's got black particles. So I am going to need... Let's actually make like a bigger area. There we go. A really good danger wall that I need. I'm, I just ran out of <laughs> magic. Um, so I am going to need to sacrifice something it looks like. Let's see here. Oh, I need to sacrifice a cow. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so let's put this cow down. Give it a punch. And yep, there we go. That did it. Oh, okay. There's a few more than just one Afrit. So let's... Uh, okay, there we go. At least I got the Afrit. 
Uh, I do need to kill off some of these guys, though. There are plenty of them. Let's see if I can get him to actually trigger any of those traps. That would be nice, though my, my mana reserves are very low. I think I'm actually immune to their projectiles, now that I think about it. So now it's just a matter of uh, killing the, the remaining bits, but oh, I've got all these traps now <laughs> that I can trigger if I walk over them. So let's just run up here and you can still take fire damage from my spell. Interesting. Oh, did that trap just like finish or activate? It didn't take me very long to find a cow. I was, I was very fortunate that I found one elsewhere. I can't seem to hit this guy for some reason. My, my mana is just too low. There we go. I'll take him out the old-fashioned way. All right, so I seem to have made a mistake. Um, as it turns out, yeah, uh, killing an Afrit with a lightning bolt is not a good idea because he did not drop anything. I thought he might have, but it appears he did not. So we're going to have to redo that. All right, here we go. Got him. <laughs> and actually knocking one of them back so far... <laughs> it, it activated the, the land trap and took out half of the uh, the blazes. Actually, almost all the blazes. That was really good. <laughs> okay, and I did get a free essence. I got two of it. Uh, go figure. I, I, I'll only need to use this spell uh, once, and here I end up doing it twice. Maybe I'll just leave it here. Um, I, don't, I don't want to have to redo it again, and I, I'm not going to put it in the tower at this point. Impure red chalk, which now, as usual, when you have some impure chalk... You just need to kind of throw it and purify it. There we go. I now have the red chalk I was missing. There we go. One book for the Merid, and then we combine it with this to name it. Put it in place. And it does not require any further sacrifices or anything like that. It just requires a bit of patience. And yeah, like I said, I, I'll definitely dress this room up. It, it looks a bit janky the way it is right now. I just wanted to have enough space for it. And I don't know that I really like this here either. Um, yeah, the uh, the up and down, it does look really cool coming down to it though. Maybe I'll have the whole thing kind of slant down to one point. That that might be pretty cool. We've got our, our new little friend here. So we're gonna put him in a soul gem. Whoop, and take him with us where we want him to be. Which, the, whoa, at this point is going to be at the top of the tower. And we can automate having him uh, come into being. Now, here's here's what he does. So first, let me give him something. It has to be specific stuff. You just give him something random from a different mod, and you might not work out well. But let me grab one diamond ore here, throw it over there, and he should pick it up. Hey, are you not going to pick it up? Okay. If I sneak click and give you the diamond ore... You're going to crush it and then throw it on the ground, right? Because you're a crusher and you're a super fast one. You're you're probably the most, the, the fastest there is right now. Okay, so I don't know what the deal was with the diamonds, but I gave him one gold ore and he just took, he gave me back eight gold dust. So let's, let's try this again. Maybe it's because the diamond ore doesn't crush in a crusher. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> so you can see some things will work, other things won't. It's more or less an ore. Uh, option, there we go. And then just instantly, pow, and now I've got 16. Then if I, I smelt these up, I think just smelting one of them up will just get me one. I don't think that these duplicate in our broomstone rune forge. Let me put one gold pile in there, or pile of gold dust. And I got, oh shoot, all right, I've got 31 ingots now. Let's try that again, because I didn't see what I had first. <laughs> All right, and I now have 32. Yeah, these don't double, but still, I mean, I'm getting octuple ore processing at this point. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite impressive, and this guy should stay here forever. I don't think that he, um, I don't think he's got, and it, yeah, he has no, uh, you know, decay. So he he's a permanent fixture. You just need to figure out how to get it to work, and I think we can make this work. There is plenty of ways with occultism to get it to work. Um, but I've also got a, a few other ideas on how we can make it work as well. Uh, I'll probably make it happen over there because that's where the inventory is, but I'm going to take him with me for the moment. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to think it through because it's a bit of a process, but I might use a little bit of create, a little bit of occultism, I don't know, maybe, maybe even some of uh, mana and artifice, 
but there's there's so much that I can combine to make it really interesting to process the stuff and then filter out the rest of it to have it processed elsewhere. Uh, and definitely going to be using some rune forges for free smelting. I mean, why not? Probably going to have the uh, the dust stuff uh, being processed much faster than they'll be getting smelted. So I might have to have multiple rune forges. But uh, besides that, something else you should know is that let's take a look at the book of rote. Uh, now that I'm level 5, while I was making spells, I noticed the complexity is now whatever you want it to be. It's all 9s. That's, that's like Final Fantasy damage right there we're talking. Uh, and it, it works in here as well. I've got maximum complexity. So this is why my spells are so freaking expensive right now. And something that I'm going to be working towards as well with the ore processing is going to be the Spellweaver stuff. Uh, the Spellweaver set, which is part of the... Um, tier 5 and it's also part of the wizard set of magic armor and such and it does require mage hoods and, and other armor you know like the previous mage set of armor a bunch of uh, runes which aren't that bad to make we've we've seen those being made before uh, regular helmets as well and then like greater motes of magic this is this is actually where it is here that's going to take a little bit the arcane and ender and each one of these requires a different amount arcane and earth this one here is Arcane and Earth and Arcane and Wind. So I am going to need to find a few more. Currently, I have found, uh, let's see, a little bit of Arcane, a bunch of Ender, and a bunch of Fire. Uh, so I still need to find some of the other ones. And with one of my spells that I have, the Eldrin Flight, it's really crazy how it works. When I, when I use this, it shows all these different routes. And oh, this looks like maybe Wind. Um, and you can see the different like aspects that are going on. It might just be that this is like, I don't know, glitching or something like that, the visual, or that's, no, I think it is just the visual is glitching. They, these are the different directions we can go. This one, I already know there's an ender one that way. Well, let's see what is, is there one over here? It looks like it. Let's cast again and it instantly like flings you across the, the, the globe, planet, surface of the, the the ground whatever to another eldrin wellspring right here yep uh so now let me grab my eldrin site ungent have a drink and oh that looks like water to me so i'm gonna put this right here i'm gonna put a waypoint we can confirm that and that makes it so much easier to find wellsprings i didn't realize this before when i had the uh the eldrin flight spell. I didn't understand that I needed to actually cast a second time, but now I do. And it's fantastic. So <laughs> off I go looking for more stuff. And yes, that's me. I am a little glowing moat. And that's that's when I, when I land. It looks pretty darn cool. It looks like I just found wind, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I think with this, uh, I'm going to call it here. I'm going to gather up a bunch of the, uh, the different materials needed, uh, specifically these different altars uh, localized around the area, and harness their power so that I can start working on my, my super mage armor that will automatically recharge my magics so much better than currently. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to give a like and subscribe. Yes, I did say that. Please be sure to do so. It helps the channel. Anyway, I'll see you guys on Twitch. Click the notification bell. See you next time.